So today's video is going to be a little bit different. This is a viewer request and we're going to talk about nuclear fusion. So nuclear fusion has been in the recent headlines after an experiment produced 10 quadrillion watts of power, breaking a new record. I decided to reach out to someone who has made this his life's work to help study nuclear fusion and try and make this a reality. His name is Siegfried Glunzer, and he came here from Western Germany several years ago, originally intending to stay for about two years to do some postgraduate studies, but he became so passionate about nuclear fusion research, he is still working on it today, and I asked him what his reaction was after this experience. When you heard, you know, what was produced, what was your reaction? I opened a beer. <laughs> you opened a beer? <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, sent an email to my colleagues and congratulations. So modern nuclear power plants use nuclear fission. That generates energy by splitting the heavy nuclei of elements like uranium and plutonium into lighter nuclei. So the problem with nuclear fission is that it produces long lasting radioactive waste. And it is a lot of waste. Nuclear, nuclear fission doesn't use small pellets. It, uh, it, nuclear fission is not as, as effective or as powerful as nuclear fusion. So you need more fuel and then you have that means you have also a lot of waste. And, 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 and I think that's what people, that's why there's no public, or there's little public support for more nuclear power plants in, in the United States. Actually, people are thinking of shutting some off, which I don't think is a good idea, but I, I'm, that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> And nuclear fusion is this idea of smashing together lighter nuclei to make heavier elements. So take a star, for example, its main energy source comes from the fusion of hydrogen into helium. So scientists were able to create this nuclear fusion burst of power of 10 quadrillion watts by firing intense beams of light from large lasers at a tiny, tiny pellet of hydrogen, uh, really small, like the size of a pea. Indicates the power of nuclear fuel. You don't need a whole lot in order to do very much. And that's why there's also hope that we can do 10 times a second because the targets are so small, it has to be developed, but it's technology that we, that we in principle know how to do. Now this energy yield was larger than scientists expected and much greater than the previous record of 170 kilojoules they set in February. So what happened is we used a peppercorn sized fusion target and we compressed it to very high densities and temperatures. It's actually reached the diameter of a human hair. That's how much we compressed it. And um, it reached temperatures and densities that exceed those in the center of the sun. And that's why nuclear fusion started setting. And nuclear fusion is a process that powers the sun and all life on Earth. And now we have successfully reproduced it in a controlled experiment on Earth. You produced it, but it lasted like not even a second, right? Like it's, how, how fast was it really? So it, it was 100 picosecond roughly. So what is 100 picoseconds? A tenth of a billionth of a second. <laughs> Siegfried used to work at the Livermore facility, but he is now over at Stanford. And he says that he and scientists at Stanford are working on a lower powered laser system that would be able to fire a lot more rapidly. So Siegfried thinks that we could hopefully see this in our lifetime, probably around 2050, but a lot has to happen before we get there. Progress, but still, I mean, so far off, right, from uh, anything we'll be able to see anytime soon. Okay, let's, let's define soon first, and then and let's see what far off means. So 10 petawatts is roughly within 500 to 1,000 times the power that, produce, that all of mankind is producing. So in that short amount of time, in that single experiment with a peppercorn-sized target, we produce more, you know, 100 times more power than us, or 1,000 times more power than us. So it's an incredible release of, of energy for a very short amount of time, you're right. So now the challenge is we need to reproduce this often. And that means we have to get the technologies going. And people think if we can do this 10 times a second, it would be, it would be uh, sufficient to scale to a power plant that can power the city of San Francisco. That's kind of the vision. 
So the reason why I think lasers are, are the way to go um, is simply this experiment will, will drive laser technologies further. But remember the laser that the experiment was, was performed on, that's 1990s technology. And since then, lasers have vastly progressed already. So and that's why lasers will continue to develop on rapid, rapid speeds, similar to not quite as, as good as a microprocessor processor, but pretty close. So there's a good chance that we can build a laser, that's a technology to build a laser to repeat these experiments 10 times a, a seconds in less than a decade. So then of course, that technology has to be, has to be scaled up to, to the, for the needs of a fusion power plant. That means you, you have to build a, a plant like this, like a, a demonstration plant. Right. That may take another decade. There's, there's a good chance to have a power plant by 2050 or earlier. 2050. Yeah, that's still in my lifetime, I hope. <laughs> it is great news for people like Siegfried who have wanted to show investors more proof of concept that this can be a reality someday. Well, just holding us back, well, at some level, a success like this needed to happen for investors to believe in the technique, right? So now, of course, there's more hope, there's hope that there will be a significant amount of money um, in coming into the field. So we have bright young people, and if we have the funding, I think the, the field can grow and we can have more, more innovations. Now, if we are successful in having this cheap, abundant, clean energy, how would that impact the world? <laughs> so, um, so first of all, that energy source is equitable. That means you don't need to be at a, at a certain location to, to do nuclear fusion because it uses, um, the fusion fuel is widely available. Like deuterium is plentiful in the oceans. Um, tritium can be, can be bred or bred in the, in the facility itself. So it is widely available. So, and that means you can put your power plants where you, where you have your needs. There's a lot of fight about resources, about oil, gases, and so on. And, and that, that geopolitical fight will, will, will diminish. Right? So, so I think well, it could be a completely new planet, right? <laughs> right. So. Why, you know, why should everyone care about nuclear fusion and its possibilities for our planet? Like, like simply put, Okay, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> Let's think about it. the simply put factor here. <laughs> so what is important is we're already experiencing every day is the, that the climate is changing. And um, with nuclear fusion, we will have the technology in place where we can alleviate the, the problems of climate change. So we will be able to do something about it. What that means is we, we would not only stop um, burning oil and gas, but we will also produce fuels for, for, for engines and for planes, but we can still have transportation going, but we have it going with clean fuel. Right, and, and the idea is like you could use ocean water and not a lot of it, right? You wouldn't need a lot of it if, if, if all works out, like, you know, it could really just be amazing. Yes, you got it. <laughs> Yeah, so um, that's that's the reason why, why young sci young scientists and young students are so excited about it. That's why they want to enter the field because they, they, they believe that there's a better future out there, that there's less impact on our planet. But I think some people also think it it might be too good to be true, just because of how hard it is to you know to accomplish. So do you having this recent record? Mm -hmm. Do you think that you know? It, like, it will take a bit of time, but we can we can do this. I believe so. Uh, the method has been too good to be true, but now that we have proved that we can do it at least for a short amount of time, um, why would we stop now? We have been criticized for ten years. So the research is too expensive. It's never going to work. We will never be able to demonstrate it. And um, and we have been going for ten years and we made it work. So of course we will not stop now. But we will continue. There's no question about. It. Siegfried makes a good point when he says that this research has only been done for about the past 10 years for this laser technology and nuclear fusion. So experiments are only with 
that can actually ignite like the, like the one in August um, that produced that had got enough nuclear fuel inside. You only do those like once a month. That means less than 200 experiments have been performed over that period. So think about it. If we could increase the rate of, of experiments, our rate of learning would explode. So why are they so seldom? Is it just because it's so expensive? No, no, it, it just, we built this 1990s technology. So if we, now we already have better technologies. Now we would already shoot much faster, but, right. Right, but that would require a new facility. Very so the, the lasers in this experiment are from the 90s. Right, exactly. In the short term, Siegfried says they have to build a 10 Hertz laser so that they can do more of these experiments. That's the technology side. On the experiment side, we have done, um, we've produced a lot of power, but as like you're saying, it was only for a short amount of time. Right. So, but, so the, the energy that came out of that experiment was still less than the energy that went in. So that means there's no energy gain. So the next, what we have to learn is producing copious amount of energy. That means we have to be able to get much more energy out than we put in. Siegfried says, in principle, they don't want to scale it up necessarily. They just want to be smarter about it. And he thinks that a lot of this learning and these experiments can happen in the next decade. I had a lot of fun digging into this video, and I really appreciate getting viewer requests for some story ideas to explore and learn about together. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and I want to hear from you in the comments what you think about nuclear fusion if this i'm sure it's something that a lot of you guys are familiar with but what do you think about it do you think it's feasible in our lifetimes love to hear from you so make sure to comment below if you are new to the channel welcome please hit that like button do not forget to subscribe and i will see you very soon i'm working on a lot of cool stuff for you guys i can't wait to share it with you